Six up-and-coming brokers. Six ambitious candidates, all with one aim. To be crowned Broker Apprentice 2015. LV's offices in the heart of the City of London. Here today, the six broker apprentices will say goodbye to their team allegiances. And it's every man and woman for themselves, as they are grilled by LV's general insurance boss, John O'Rourke. First in the interview chair, it's Charles. Charlie, how did he fare during the task? Charlie was uh, very interesting in terms of the way he developed through the task. So when I first met him, before the first task, he seemed quite quiet, uh, quite reserved. And actually when the team were getting ready for the first task, he wasn't adding perhaps as much as I would have hoped for and was looking for. Let's go on and, and, and talk about the tasks. Yeah. Uh, how did you find those? They were really quite challenging. The first one in particular was something that threw me completely outside of my comfort zone. So going out onto the streets of Wimbledon, they're trying to get people through the doors to look at uh, home insurance and motor insurance. That threw me well outside of my comfort zone and you very quickly get used to being rebuffed and people not being interested in what you have to say. I got the impression from the interview that he was quite a strategic thinker. Yes it did and I think that perhaps is what I'd seen early on in thinking as being quiet. I think there's a lot of thinking going on there. Uh, and he really understood the, the tactics of what it was going to take to win in the different uh, competitions. And on the third task, how did you go about that? We took Ginny's experience from JLT in that they have this online portal for their major risks, but it's only for them and a couple of select insurers. And Dan actually came up with the idea of a broker being able to trade online, you know, a smaller broker having access to this kind of product. And then I decided that we needed something that was commercially viable to push premium through it to make this online incredible platform worthwhile having and I think you had to make it feasible not just this incredible concept that was airy-fairy I think you had to have something that was tangible and real and that's what my contribution was. And on the leadership front does he have um, clear leadership skills? He was a quiet leader and within that within the group I don't think anyone really stood out as a strong leader but he was a real kind of solid core to the team and really helped work with the others and, and keep guiding it in in the right direction throughout the task. Next up, it's Daniel. Dan's been a really interesting candidate because that really early enthusiasm came through strongly and ahead of the task, he was very clear, very confident in terms of what he could do. Real strength, he was saying, in terms of his ability to speak to people and engage with people. But interesting, when we were out on the task, that didn't come through as strongly. And when he was actually faced in the real life uh, examples, wasn't quite as confident and able to engage with others as, as maybe was expecting to see. Whose fault was it in your team that you failed? I'd say collectively. I kind of led the second element of the task and led the let's get some sweets, let's get things that people kind of will come over to the table and look into, let's get some balloons in place. I think that element of it worked, but um, in terms of actually the broader picture, we really, well, we just, we weren't as, as as far thinking or thinking ahead as much as the other team were, you know. And on the team side, what did Dan bring to the team as a whole? Well, I think Dan, one, one thing he's really good at, very strong in terms of ideas. So when they were looking at uh, how they're going to approach things, what they could do on the task, very strong in terms of coming up with those, uh, those ideas and helping create some real differential for the team. And on the second task, why do you think you won that? What we didn't do very well in the first task we did well in the second task, which helped us win. We looked at what the actual objective was, and the objective was to promote insurance broking. And all the way through behind the scenes where we were creating our video and creating our sort of presentation, I kept saying to Virginia and Charlie, remember what the task is. Virginia settles down for her interview. 
Well, Virginia, uh, I think, has been a great candidate. Uh, throughout, we've seen she's been really willing to learn and she's really seemed to work well with the team and really seen the progress with each task that, that's come through with that. The first task was to convince people to use an insurance broker and unfortunately, you weren't successful in that task. I think we were very focused on delivering to the brief and making sure that we actually fulfilled kind of the criteria and what we understood the goals to be. The problem that we faced was that we didn't actually think outside the box enough. One area perhaps that's not been as evident though is her creativity. Although she's worked well as part of the team, not been as strong creatively maybe as some of the others. So working with um, Charlie and Dan has been great. The boys are both very creative. I feel like I took it upon myself to actually make sure that throughout the task we were constantly reviewing um, what we'd set out to achieve. I felt like I definitely kind of had to keep in check with the boys and make sure they were delivering what they said they were going to do. One area she's been really good with is relationship side, whether that's been on different tasks with different types of groups of people, relationship side's been a real strength for her. I've got a really good work ethic. I work extremely hard, always make sure that I deliver over and above what is expected and I hope that's become apparent in the challenges that we've been given. I'm extremely diligent as well so kind of always making sure that everything is um, exactly how I want it, um, you know, the attention to detail is great. Also, um, I think I'm a great team player, always kind of trying to throw out their creative um, ideas, um, listening to people, making sure communication is great, but actually reviewing everything that you have, you know, you've set as a team. Tristan follows Virginia into the chair. What came across perhaps most strongly with Tristan was his enthusiasm. Right from the start, he's, you know, he was, he was charging around, really enthusiastic, wanted to do things, uh, and, and that was really good to be around. What would you say have been your, your biggest learning, your best learning from the process of being in this contest? Didn't expect I'd enjoy the process as much as I have and I'd learn as much as I did from the whole process. From the first day in filming to, to Wimbledon, I got some really good feedback from mentors um, about the way I spoke to people, why I approached people in the street and talked to them. I was called a bit of an excited puppy because I was so keen to get on. Um, I was calmed down and that was a massive, I used all the skills that I picked up on that first day at the expo to talk to people and I hope that came across. I think really, you know, he needs to be able to take people with him on those ideas though and, and uh, just make sure that he doesn't go off too quickly um, because if he doesn't have a good team behind him then his ideas, his creativity won't really come to the fore. I came into this process thinking I'm pretty good, I'm, I'm at a level, but I've been in a competition with someone who's got a, a law degree and dealing in corporate brokers, someone who um, has eight clients and goes to New York and Chicago and I work in little old Rotten Y dealing with um, anything from a farmer to a tradesman. Um, I didn't expect when I came in the door I was quite awed by it all, but I think from the whole process I've learned so much from step one to the end that if you were judging it on a case of who has changed the most or learnt the most, I think I've taken so much out of this experience um, that even if I didn't win it, I've come out a different person and a different insurance broker. Now it's Nick's time in the hot seat. Nick, how did he get on in the, uh, in the three tasks that we said? Although he was the youngest, I don't think that really showed. Um, he, he has a, a natural ability as a salesman. Uh, I think he was probably by far and away the, the best salesman that we had on the team. And he can use that actually, he can use that natural charm, that natural sales technique if you like, to help develop a bit more professionally. Talking to people, I think I convey myself very well. Um, I think I can build a relationship very quickly with someone which, is, which has been a, a strong factor over the past few tasks. He was very good at taking direction that I saw but I'm not sure again how much of uh, you know, the original ideas that he came up with. I think the fact that you know I've come in at a young age, which I would never use to a disadvantage of anything, it's an advantage. Um, but the fact that I've got a wide view on insurance, I'm a fresh pair of eyes. I think the fact that I can bring a lot to you know not just my business um, back in Pool, but I think to teams in general. I think if you were to put me in any team, I'd be an asset, and I think I can bring the best out of people so I can bring the team to give 110%. I think he was very calm throughout the process, uh, and I liked that a lot. He had a, a naturally calm, sort of mature, really, approach, and I, I liked that. Emma looks to impress John. I found Emma to be 
know, very, very hardworking indeed. She's clearly a very resilient individual, definitely not a quitter. I'm here to develop my skills and that's one thing that I didn't feel I was very confident with. So instead of just taking the back seat, I did fully immerse myself in doing that, speaking to people. I managed to get someone through the doors to sit down and do a quote. So I think I really surprised myself and proved that I can do that. I didn't see too much in the way of leadership from her during the task. So I wonder really, was there much more she did in the background? Because it didn't really come out in the tasks for me. I, I would say she's a very, very capable individual, um, very hardworking and actually had quite a caring side, which came out through some of the tasks as well. Following the task in Wimbledon where we spoke to the general public, I think I was fairly m more confident this time around with speaking to the teenagers in the school. Again, we worked off our own strengths. In our presentation, there was more information about like the caring side of insurance with clients. I focused on that a lot because that's what's really important to me. What would you say was her strongest contribution to the team? I, I think her, her hard work and her energy in that regard was, was definitely a strong point. I think I've, I've shown through all the tasks that we've done is that I'm very easily adaptable. Taken out of my comfort zone, I can adapt to all kinds of situations um, and just that I'm hard working and I get on with a, a variety of people. I can adapt to work with other people. I've done the interviews, you guys have been out on the tasks with them. We've got to make a decision. One final question for you. If you don't win it, who should win it? I would be really happy to see Nick win. But I would say maybe Tristan would have to pick the post on that one. No, I would go with Emma. I would have to say probably Virginia. Charlie. don't want to answer that because I'd like to win it. <laughs> They're all strong candidates. I think we all deserve to win it. Winner chosen, it's time for the apprentices to learn their fate. The first thing I'd like to say is congratulations to you all. You're an incredibly impressive group of individuals. And quite frankly, each one of you could have won the Broker Apprentice of the Year 2015. You've made our choice very difficult, but we have actually now made a decision, such a tough decision. And the winner is... Charlie Barrett. With Charles declared the winner, the candidates toast the victor. So what does being the Broker Apprentice 2015 mean for Charles? Brilliant. Slightly gobsmacked. Um, as you can probably tell by my reaction, I was kind of genuinely didn't think it was going to be me, so very pleasantly surprised. I guess one of the highlights for me for the entire competition besides the Expo would probably have to be something, something like the trip to the school. So being able to go and present to a group of school kids, uh, sick formers, who are all very seriously now starting to consider careers or university and being able to actually try and open their eyes to the world of insurance uh, and you know at the beginning saying who wants to do it nobody and at the end everybody so that was very rewarding for me. I think what made us choose Charlie in the end was a number of things really but tremendous presence and gravitas he already acts and thinks and behaves like a business leader I think he's very grounded he's a very good people person understands the importance of team dynamics and doesn't put himself out to be a big shot, uh, very collaborative, uh, but also a, a thinker and a strategist. And I think the, the, the kind of really convincing part was that he can articulate a, a vision for what needs to be done and then really focus on actually delivering and getting it done. And that, you need to have both in our industry. So after four challenges, contested across Wimbledon, Bromley, Coventry and the City of London, Congratulations to Charles Barrett of Henderson's, the winner of Broker Apprentice 2015.